Hi, this is Max, and I would like to show you a tool that I created called Bowl Builder that allows you to design these stadium bowls or the spectator stands and evaluate them. You can download it from Food for Rhino. And the only other dependency that we have is this GH Python component here that you can also download from Food for Rhino. The way to install those is that you go to Grasshopper under File, Special Folders, Components, and File, Special Folders, user objects folder you take the python component copy that into the libraries folder make sure to right click properties and check that this isn't blocked or something you might have to uh, tick a box here you take the bowl builder components and put them in the user objects um, uh, folder and again property see that it's not blocked extract then I'm, I'm not sure if you have to do this but i like taking these user objects and putting them in the front uh, i think that that is a, actually a necessary step so now what you can do is you go back here unload plugin and then you just start it again And you'll see the difference now is that under the math script tab, you've got this grasshopper com uh, Python component. And what is also new is that you have this new bowl builder tab here with all the components. Now this follows a sort of um, common workflow that is used to create these, um, these bowls. It starts with a usage, so some kind of um, sports field and I've got some defaults here. I like using white and cyan if I'm working with a black background just as a side note I uh, also got things like a, a tennis state uh, um, field here or a soccer stadium which is way bigger and we're going to be using mainly that so the next step is to um, agree on some kind of um, typology and there are a couple of defaults here so there's a rectangular one that is sort of in this case geared towards a, um, a soccer field I've also got a an octagon here, but that is geared more towards the, the size of a, of a tennis field. So what you can do is take the touch line and stick it in there, and now it'll be it'll adhere to the to the soccer field. And I'll, I'll do that with these other ones as well. For large soccer stadia, the most um, common shape is, for lack of a better word, this soap shape, as we sometimes call it, that consists of different arc segments. And I'm going to go with that for now. So the next step is now, actually, let me first take this component, which is a geometry info component. And this gives you um, basically the arc radii. You can get some info on these here. So in the case of the soap shape, you have a, a long arc, which is this one, and it gives you the radius and angle and for the others as well. You can even take a native text tag component hook up the L and T and then that gives you some uh, the same information as here basically so that was just a side note um, for fabrication usually you don't um, you, you usually don't fabricate this as a curved shape but what you do is you polygonize the whole matter Um, so as to be able to create this um, with prefabricated concrete elements. So the, the segments input basically allows you to choose how many segments each arc type is going to have. Remember there's the long arc, the corner arc, and the what I call it here short arc. So five is, or nine now is the long arc, and maybe the last one I'll give some more, say something like this. And again, what I can do is create create an, a naming of these of these axes now. By the way, this is done um, in in a manner in which um, each of these slices is basically the same size for each arc, and then the the last one is half of one of these. And the same with with here so this right here is the is the corner segment and you can see these are all the same um, and they are 
in and of themselves um, symmetrical, but then the, the corner ones are half of these. What that leads to is the fact that you have a little gap right about here. And that ge generally happens if you use this soap shape, uh, but as long as it says under something like uh, 20 millimeters, it's within the construction tolerance, so that's fine. Next, we can build the stadium section. So I'll go to the front view for this. Right here, we have a three-tier stadium. Uh, what we need here is touchline and the outline is this right here. And we can set a distance. Um, Okay, play around with this. And now with the rows, what I like to do is from the params tab here, get one of these gene pools. And let's say we have three rows. In this case, I'll have no decimal numbers. You'll see where this gets me. So now for each of the tiers, I can specify how many rows. And you can play a, a similar game for other parameters. Now, now the, the way that the, um, the section is generally designed is by means of a minimum C value. So I'll explain what that is in a minute. I'll just set the domain for that. It will be something like, oops, this here. So a C value is the distance, uh, the vertical distance above a person's eye to where it intersects the sideline of the person sitting behind. So these are basically viewing angles. Um, and generally, um, for instance, FIFA specifies some minimum values. I think it might be this or possibly eight. What we might do is say that the, the, uh, the middle tier is the VIP tier. So they get slightly better viewing conditions, which you can see by these lines being further apart. So they can, they, they have a better view. Um, Finally, let me maybe do one more, say, cantilevers. So this is basically specifying these cantilevers. And in this case, I think the last one doesn't do anything because three tiers, we've only got two cantilevers. So note that in order to fulfill this C value um, uh, um, criterion here, if you increase the cantilever, then the um, stadium needs to uh, become much higher. So I'll crank that down again. Okay, what we can do now is take this assemble component, which takes the outline, axes, and we'll take section info for now. And then all of a sudden, we, we actually have the stadium here already. These are just curves, because that makes it um, just uh, cal calculate much quicker and um, the, the viewport isn't as clunky. You can stick a boolean toggle into output breps. Um, that takes a while to calculate the breps and I, I usually do that towards the end if I, w if I want to bake the geometry. So one other thing I'd like to show you, I'll just make this a little bit bigger. So oftentimes, especially with large stadia, you'll see that the the um, upper perimeter of this has has some kind of undulation. One way you can do that is to take another one of these. And here what we're going to do is create a perimeter. So something like that. Oops, there we go, that should do it. And I'll stick it in here. And basically all that does is trim the stadium like that. And then we get this, this sort of pretty fancy looking stadium here. And by the way, we can probably just throw this in into the other stadium shape and then we get this or even Uh, rectangular stadium, but I'll, I'll leave it in here for now. 
Okay, since the next step is going to take a while to calculate, I'll just crank this down again and I'll take away the perimeter just to make things a bit faster. There we go. Um, okay, and now, now we'll take this seat module here and hook that up here and say output seats. Okay, and here we can see that it has calculated some seats here. Um, one thing we could do is have two different types of seats. And then actually we do make a larger stadium. There we go. This is still a little bit clunky. I'm, I might change this in future. So let's say the regular seats are this size and the gap in between seats is very small. And then the VIP people get larger seats with a larger gap in between. And this applies only to rows Let's see, we need to start with 14, because that's where the first tier ends. And then there's six rows. So that will apply to the VIP tier. And this will just fill out the rest. So let's just see where that leaves us. Um, okay, let's take a look. And we can see that that worked. So the lower tier, we have the small chairs, then here we have the big ones, and then the small ones again. Okay, so what I want to do in the next step is actually get the eyes of the people so that we can evaluate their viewing experience. So I'm just gonna do this, stick that in there, and we'll only have one of these seed modules just to make things a bit simpler and what I'm going to do because we don't need this type of um, resolution I'm just going to have them in big gaps from from one another um, do we need all of this yeah we'll just leave it at that or maybe a bit slightly bigger okay Let's calculate that okay and now these dots here are the actual eyes uh, of people sitting quite far from another. So what we can now do is use this tab here to evaluate this. For instance, the C values, we can visualize those. There and touchline. Takes a while to calculate those. Okay, and what we can do now is visualize them with a gradient component. So the larger the C value is the better. So I'm going to use, um, I'll just use this one and flip these around. Okay. There's a minimum value. I'll say 0 0.6. There's a maximum. I'll say 0 0.2 because above 20 centimeters, you generally got the entire, your entire field of view there. Um, I'll give it a custom preview. We want to visualize the, the eyes within these colors here. And there you go. So you can see that in the, in the corners, that's where we defined our worst case scenario because that's where you're closest to the field. And uh, they've got low C values except for the middle tier, which we gave larger C values. But then as we move more to the inside here, you can see that um, because the ball is further away from the field. You have ge generally better C values, whereby the middle tier gets the gets yet, yet again the best ones. So, I created this um, this tool um, um, while, while I was doing my master's thesis in architecture, and I was um, evaluating stadium type typologies, and I figured that. Um, you know, the, the C value is usually used as a metric for viewing experience. 
um, in the design process, but if you if you apply that to a rectangular stadium, generally the C value tells you that all of these seats here have the same quality. When actually, if you're in the corner, you don't like that because you need to crank your uh, your, your head to the side to to watch the game. So I figured, hey, there must be other uh, metrics to evaluate the viewing experience other than just C values, and that's uh, these are a couple of other ones that I that I could think of. So I'm going to put uh, actually we'll just leave, let's just leave it at that. And so one other thing may be, okay, horizontal viewing angle is basically how far I need to crank my head to the side in order to see the game. So what, what do I need there? Outline and axes. Um, let's calculate that. Okay, and then what I need here again, this time I need to flip this around because the larger the angle is the worse so I'll stick that in here and in order to get the lower and upper limit I'm going to do this this takes this gives you the bounds then I'm going to take this component which gives me the lowest and highest value and I'm just going to stick this in here so now it's it's evaluating according to how how far I need to turn my turn my head. So obviously the these seats here are worse because I need to look sideways. So you might then further say, well, it's it's a combination of the two of these, and that's what I've got these two components for. This one will need two of those, and this one. So what this does is it takes this and it gives you a domain. Uh, it needs a domain, so we'll take this. And then, actually one thing we could have done sorry, let me just turn this around again. We could simply stick these in, in the in the opposite order. And similarly, I'll do that here as well to get this domain there. And now finally, we can assign a, an importance. So let's just say it's 50-50. Now we can stick both of these in here. So these are the values. And then again, I can use this here. Low and high. God, I need more space. There we go. That should be it. So let's see where this brings us. Okay, so this is basically overlaying that with this, and that gives you this. So let me just stick that back into the soap shape. Okay, I actually sped that up because it was taking a while. Um, finally, we might want to just increase the resolution to one, and um, I'll speed this up again. Okay, so that took quite a while to calculate. Um, it looks like I've still got some um, some performance uh, bottlenecks. By the way, I, I scripted all this in Python. The nice thing about these user objects is that you can actually double click them and then um, look through my, through my code. So if you find anything interesting in there or want to contribute in some way, then um, by all means, um, uh, let me know. So uh, I hope uh, uh, this tool can be useful to you and um, yeah, have fun with it.